Texas talking football horns up, gentlemen. Let's let's talk a little bit of a uh, big picture college football before we get to our game. Um, horrible news, horrible, horrible news for Jordan Travis, quarterback FSU. You hate to see it goes down um, in a really gruesome injury, and that's going to be his Florida State career. He put it out on Twitter. Um, but looking at it from a holistic point of view, do you think that's going to hurt them in the committee's eyes, not having their signal caller there? Well, they're going to stay where they are, <clears throat> but they're not going to win this game against Louisville mm-hmm. in, in their conference championship game. They might not even win this game against Florida this week. Like, it's, I think their season's over. So the committee will do what they, what they do, and they'll give them – the same ranking that they probably did last week, last year, because they didn't lose this game, and they'll just let them eliminate themselves. Mm. Toss. Yeah, I think um, you know it would be classic fashion college football mayhem and madness for them to now win out with their backup QB and be presented and present the committee with the choice of having to make that decision. But I do think. Uh, I do think Nick is right. I think they win or I think they lose one of these next two games. Um, more, more than likely it'll be against Louisville, not against Florida, in my opinion. Um, bummer, huge bummer for Louisville, right? Cause now you're beating a team with your backup quarterback as opposed to beating them with Jordan Travis. And if you thought you could beat him and look like they're a really good team, I don't know why they wouldn't believe that they couldn't, they, they're also going to be in the ACC championship. Um, that, that win will be a little less, meaningful than it, what it could have been. Um, it'll be a lot less meaningful in my mm. opinion. Um, and I, and I presume that the the committee will probably share that sentiment. So it's, it's a huge bummer. I mean, this guy was having a great year. He had such a good connection with, with Coleman. Um, they had won some really tough games uh, on the back uh, of his shoulders and some <clears throat> in, incredibly impressive throws. And I think, you know, we're, we're talking a lot about these NFL teams that are looking at these, these draft prospects and, I don't think his name is brought up enough. Honestly, I, I know tools wise, he's not the same as may or Williams or Daniels now who's, you know, flying up boards, but um, he's been so consistent. He's, he's been such a, a pro at, at the college level uh, already. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it, it's just a bummer to see him go down. Cause you never want to see injuries take a team out of um, college football contention. And I think I, at the end of the day, I agree with Nick. I think this will unfortunately kind of, uh, it'll end their journey in some respect. Okay. Does the winner of Ohio State Michigan automatically get the number one spot, presuming they win the Big Ten championship? The number one spot? No, I don't believe so. I think you still have to see how Georgia fares these last couple of weeks. They're number one for a reason. So if they beat Georgia Tech and then they win the SEC championship, presumably they probably play, you know, play Bama. Bama. Right. So, yeah, no, there's no way, in my opinion. Okay. They're one for a reason right now. You're saying there's no I agree with you. If there's no way if Georgia wins out, beats right. Bama, I, not I'd, one. I'd believe that they would stick at one as well. I also think that the committee keyed in on our team. And if our team ends up with the four seed, that's an excellent semifinal matchup between the Georgia Bulldogs Sugar Bowl. and uh, the Texas Longhorns. And it's obviously, yeah, a repeat of the Sugar Bowl matchup and two fan bases that are very similar that will be both playing each other in the sec going forward. So I think like narrative wise, that makes a ton of sense. Mm -hmm. If the game is close, Michigan, Ohio state, if it's really tight. It comes down to the end. Is the loser automatically out? Say one more time. Is the loser automatically out of the playoffs of Ohio state, Michigan, if the game is really tight and let's say it's Michigan that loses on the road. Yeah. I think the loser is automatically out no matter what. Okay. Toss. I think there's a scenario where, they're not out, but I think a lot has to fall in their favor um, because you don't have that conference championship. Obviously, if the Horns lose the Big 12 championship, you know that that changes things. If um, I guess you just have to look at the pack, but the breakdown of of you know Oregon's strength of schedule now is They've not had a single top 25 win, right? So it's it doesn't look great for these for Washington and Oregon. The way that everything has unraveled in the pack. Uh, over the course of the last five weeks has really hurt these teams at the top of that that conference. So I, I don't think it's out of the question, but I think it's highly unlikely that the loser of... Yeah, they, w- they would need help, in my yeah. opinion. It wouldn't be just a thing where, you know, they lost by like a two-point game or something, and then 
you know, they they beat out Texas, who is the Big 12 champion, and they beat out one of the teams who is the Pac-12 champion, and they beat out, you know, let's say Florida State does win and stays stays undefeated. Like Florida State's getting in, mm-hmm. um, even with the backup quarterback. But, yeah, they would need help. They would need Texas to lose. They would need probably Washington to lose. They would need um, – they need Florida State to lose. They, you know, you, they would need. They they would need, they'd more, need more Oregon. More. They'd need Oregon to lose to the Beavers and probably Washington to lose to the Wazoo Cougars, and then something weird to happen in that Pac Championship game. They need Texas to lose. Like it would just be, it'd be a lot. It'd be a lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. And then we basically now we could get into our team. We basically need, like, what's our scenario? So, okay, you're saying the loser of Ohio State, Michigan, they're out. That bumps us to six. So now we need to go two spots. So we we realistically need Florida State to drop one of these games. Oh, yeah. So Florida oh, yeah. State drops one of these games, and let's say that game they drop is to even Louisville. Dude, Louisville is not jumping us, right? I mean, if we win the conference championship, Louisville is not jumping us, no. Okay, so that moves us to five. So basically – and presumably, State, Oregon and Washington, one of those teams has to lose too. So that, that'll bump us to four. So if Florida State loses one of these next two games and we take care of business, we're going to the college football playoffs. Yeah, I mean, what this is realistically how it's going to shake out. I think Michigan is ultimately going to be Ohio State. Sure. They're going to move to number two. Georgia will stay number one because the, I think they'll I think they will be Bama. I think they'll go undefeated, finish the season. And Florida State is going to end up losing either this week to Florida. I will have to see how their quarterback plays this week to Florida or next week to Louisville. Texas wins out. They take care of business against Tech. Then they beat whoever we face. Hopefully it's OU so we can get revenge. But there's a three-way tie right now between Kansas State or uh, Oklahoma State and, and Oklahoma. So I guess we just have to see how this last week shakes out for everybody. And then... Oregon and Washington duke it out in the uh, the Pac-12 championship game. And one of those teams gets bumped because they lose to the other. And Texas gets to jump that team as well. And that's how we get in. Yeah, I would also just throw in there that I think it's relatively critical that we beat Tech by more than a score. Uh, sure, we think, have to really take care of business. And we have to win the Big 12 championship. Not handily but assuredly is what i would say yeah yeah i i'm, I'm like almost cur- i'm wondering like what's i mean selfishly like getting you know licking our chops so we can have the easiest road for us to attend the game which would be for us to end up in the rose bowl if georgia wins and we're the four seed that's not looking good that game's going to be in new orleans what's the world in which we like we would need michigan to be the one seed and we would still need to be the four, I believe. I mean, look, if they clobber Ohio State, it, it could be different. And Bama plays Georgia really, really tight, and both teams don't look great, right? Like if it's an ugly game, I mean, that changes things for, for me. Um, it all depends on the script. But I think we have a – it doesn't help that Michigan, you know, almost lost to Maryland, and Maryland looked like they could have won that game at, at certain sure. moments. Yeah, that's their moment. Should have won that game. And do I know, you, I know it was home think, for the Terps, but yeah. Do you, sorry, do you think that though it's more advantageous than in the sense that Ohio State clobbers Michigan because they were at one point ranked number one by the committee? Maybe. Yeah, I just don't think it's gonna happen. I think I, I literally I do think that Michigan's a better team. Yeah, we'll I see. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. know. I've just. I've just. I feel like McCarthy's playing his worst football right now over the last two weeks, which doesn't help because the best part about the Ohio State team, besides Marvin Harrison, is their defense. Their defense is incredible, and they've got some really good playmaking DBs and safeties. So and the edge um, guys too, Sawyer to Imamo. Like both those guys are really good. Um, I think it'll end up being a classic matchup as it always is, and it'll probably be tooth and nail to the to the finish um which yeah, is what you also, want, right we're also just like not considering here that mm-hmm. iowa completely just plays an iowa game in their conference championship and like only lets up 13 points to whoever team they play that game should be illegal 
that game should be illegal. Like I, it's it I, the the Iowa Illinois game was is like should be illegal. That that is a lock to go under. That under could be like twenty five points, and I would like comfortably take that. I think it was like around there is what it hit. Like it, that is the Iowa Hawkeyes just play such like a gritty, like boring, boring game. Yeah, I mean they <laughs> they've won so last week against Illinois they won fifteen to thirteen. The week before they won twenty two nothing against Rutgers. The week before that they won ten to seven against Northwestern. The week before that they mm-hmm. lost twelve to ten. The week before <laughs> that they they won fifteen to six against Wisconsin. Against Purdue is twenty to fourteen. I mean these are. So that's two out of the last six games gone over 30 points. That's it. Yep. That is horrible. Yeah. Horrible, horrible. Um, all right, let's go to our team. Good win in Ames. You know, their other offensive line came out, was talking smack. They ran the ball for nine yards. Our defensive front is absolutely fantastic. Um, let's go down the line, uh, in, in this victory, you know, maybe some, maybe a, not three takeaways, but maybe two takeaways a pop positive and, you know, also negative because there's always things that we could be working on uh, as we beat the Iowa state cyclone 26 to 16 in Ames. Uh, Toss, we'll start with you, man. A positive takeaway. Yeah. A positive takeaway, just showing resolve on the road um, and letting our X factor <laughs> take care of business and win us this football game, which was, you know, the defensive line, they were tremendous clutch sacks, um, tips at the line, you know, by, by sweat. And I thought, you know, our defense in general just stepped up when we needed him to Jerron Thompson with that, that pick, that was at a great spot in the game. I know we gave up that fourth down conversion that turned into a touchdown. Um, but again, like those are lapses that happen here and there. Um, shout out to them for a good coaching decision to run, 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 and then fake the run into the pass. And they, mm-hmm. they took advantage of our, our defense biting and, and not, um, not believing that they were a threat and, you know, their Dean, their tight end takes it in for a touchdown. But I thought our defense did exactly what we needed them to do. Um, we held them to 16 points. I mean, what more can you ask for on the road from a squad that is operating at a high, high level right now? Mm-hmm. Nick. Yeah. Um, you're going to have success and you're going to win a football game. If you're holding the other team to nine yards rushing, that Absolutely. is huge. I mean, I've as a Texas fan, I've never seen that. I mean, unless you know, granted, we're playing against an FCS team or you know a, a much lesser opponent that can't get anything going. But this is a Iowa State team that has a pretty decent run game. You know, it's not like they're off the charts running the ball, but they usually have guys that can break for a hundred yards. You know, Abu Sama and, and Eli Sanders, like we've seen them before, and they they definitely you know have that c- capability but less than 10 yards total on the game rushing is pretty unbelievable. And that's the type of defense that you want heading into the stretch when you want to make that run into the college wall playoff, when you want to send your team into the ICC, nine yards rushing. Love that. And then just taking care of the ball in general, you know, no, no turnovers for us was, was huge besides the Xavier worthy. But, uh, but like the, the, the big glaring thing for me is like Quinn was, protecting the ball, you know, and not really giving it up. And I really think we played a pretty clean game. I mean, I'd like to see them off the ground a little bit more. We, we let up three sacks for him, but you know, spreading out the ball is another thing. You know, we mentioned that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys caught passes. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's better than, than four guys. And Hey, what do you know? Jay Witt, one of the captains of our team catches a couple big passes, one of them for a touchdown. So I think it's all around, you know, good, clean, gritty win heading into Ames. Yeah, I, I think, you know, those sacks were early. I think we settled into the game nicely. We had some injuries in the game to three major players. Xavier Worthy at wide receiver, you just mentioned, Jatavian Sanders, our tight end. Gunnar Helm, though, came in valiantly and had another strong showing um, without Sanders out on the field. DJ Campbell, our guard, Campbell, who, we really, yeah. who we really love. But Sark expects all three guys to be ready to play for Friday against <clears throat> Texas Tech, which is really sweat. Exciting. Sweat went down for a little bit, too. Like, there were... Yeah. yeah, those are scary a, moments for sure. Not not oh, things yeah. I wanted to see as I was watching the game. Absolutely not. But I mean, like, look, man, like Glad sweat is sweat's going to be an all American. Yeah, gonna be you know what? I, I liked what it was really classy at the end of the game. He went up to uh, Gerard. Uh, what was the the offensive lineman for the Iowa State guys that 
that basically said, you know, yeah, they're yeah. common names in the dark with that quote, like they don't know what's coming for them. Well, he went up to that that guy at the end of the game and gave him some respect. And he was like, Hey man, like you guys play us well every single season. And like, you know, this was a fun one and good luck to you, you know, for the rest of your season and good luck to you, you know, in your career. Like that was classy. And he could have totally just gone to his face and just been like, yeah, what happened? Exactly. Nine yards rushing. Yeah. Okay. Like came into your place senior night. How about that? But no, all the way around all respect, all love. And I thought that was super classy. It was. He did tweet nine of something about the nine yards, but like, yeah, we'll but, that that's Twitter. Uh, some stars of the game, like obviously, Murphy and Sweat are two pros, and it's amazing to watch these guys continue to play the way they do. Uh, Murphy, for his age, he can really fly up draft boards. Benya, too. Benya was great. Yeah. I, I, my star of the game, that was guy who had an amazing read of a pass for a pick uh, was our top rated tackler in the game. That's Jaron Thompson at safety. He was again, like going back to how good our safety and defensive backfield depth has been. I feel like every week we're highlighting a different player in, in the defensive backfield who's popped off. And this week it was Jaron Thompson. And that's, that is such a beautiful thing to see as a Longhorn fan. Like, I can't believe we're sitting here being like, our defensive line is pros and they're killing it. Our defensive backfields, like, pick your poison. Like, we really are back. This is, to me, what DBU is all about. Having a stalwart of guys that could come in and really and really dominate. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I want to give another shout out as I'm looking at the stat line to our boy, Bert Auburn. He's been perfect since the Tossie OU game. <laughs> he, he, he's not missed a field goal since OU game. His last miss was against Kansas. He had two of them. I got so, I, I got three texts from three different people of f- just a photo of Bert from Sesame Street during the game. That's, that's how like like it's circulating in Longhorn Nation. Like people are talking about how important this guy has been for us. Like those three field goals, especially in the first half of this game were really important to us. I mean, he hit two in the first, right? And then he hit one in, in the second half. But um I mean, we won by career- we won by we won by 10 points. Yeah. And he accounted for 10 points. And a career long, right? The 50 yarder, that was a big deal for him. Um and a, a huge thing for him showing to NFL teams that he can do it 50 plus, which is which is great to see. I mean, we even I mean, had we, we're, we're we're a K kicker you for sure. Definitely. You have to be. Have to be 100%. him if he goes to the pros. Dick or Tucker, are amazing. Phil Dawson, Phil yeah. D. I loved the point though about like I know Quan is super happy about Jay Witt's involvement. Um, you know the and like you mentioned, Nick, it was it wasn't just a touchdown pass. It was the thirty yard reception that allowed us to get into field goal range at the end Maybe of the first game. half as well. Um, the two point conversion too, right? That that was mm. at an important time during the game that got the score up to six. Um, could have been five. So, you know, that, that was nice. Uh, but Jay Witt was great. Helm stepping up, like us tapping in at different moments on the offensive side of the ball to our different weapons. JT had that first third down conversion of the game for us. Baxter had over a hundred yards. Like I was about to say, he, there's one elephant in the room that we're not addressing. He was able to step up. Um, so I was proud to see our guys do what they needed to do to, to get a dub. And I, um, and, and Quinn did enough. I, I felt like, you know, there's still some soreness. I thought that was apparent to me. It still doesn't seem like he has the same zip he had on the ball um, from, you know, prior to the injury, but it's it's getting better and better. The one thing I would say is like on that, on that sweep where worthy took it upfield and fumbled. Those are the little things where he makes the wrong read on his block and he tries to cut inside of JT Sanders, as opposed to, staying on the outside, using his speed and, um, and getting to that next level and then just going out of bounds when he needs to. Right. Yeah. And, and those are the plays where we just, we got to be mentally sound against tech. Um, cause you know, they're going to be looking to pop the ball out, um, and take advantage of opportunities. If we turn the ball, over. I love that clip of uh, the tech head coach at the beginning of the season. It runs through Lubbock. It all runs through Lubbock as if like, that's going to be, you know, where the college football playoff ends our dreams. No, I mean, they're coming to Austin on senior night in the dark. They're not gonna know what's coming for them. Let's do our thing. We're gonna beat we're gonna beat the fuck out of them. Also, I love the <laughs> quote. I love the quote by by Sark too, where he goes, Yeah, like you know, I always think about that quote, five star players, you know, but we got the five star culture. Well, it's awesome. Now we have both. Yeah. We're adding on that. Facts. Great quote. 
It's the truth. Fisher to stop with DJ Nikki Snacks. We'll see you guys for a tech preview, hopefully with Q. Um, and then if you don't, if you miss us there because it's the holiday weekend, have a great Thanksgiving. We love you guys. Appreciate you rocking with us. Let's go get a dub uh, against Texas Tech on senior night, like Nick said. Hook 'em horns. We'll see y'all next time. Hook 'em.